Good evening, everyone. It's Tom Sidney Bushnell, aka Numbers, here from Sight Club from the Tom Numbers Show. News of Tom Numbers on top of your game. And look who's back. Jetson White is back. And he's sporting. Do you want to show your shirt, Jetson? 88 miles per hour. So I saw him wearing that just before we got on. I was like, right, I've got to go and get my one. So I went and got my one. 88 miles per hour. So 88 plus 88. Trump plus Trump. You do that in the time travel series. Comes to 176, which comes to Back to the Future, which comes to November the 11th, which comes to full disclosure, which comes to level playing field, full conclusion. Comes to Real Tom Numbers, my Twitter handle. So, uh, Jetson, it's great to see you, buddy. How are you, man? Good day to you, Major Tom. It's been a it's been a while since we've done a show, isn't it? Right, it has, and I think today we need to commence countdown. Turn the engines on. We do. There we go. So, but you know why the papers want to know whose shirts you wear. And as do I, because I, after seeing you in that marvelous 88 miles per hour shirt, I had to get one as well. But uh, I'm not quite pleased with it. So I'd like to really know, where did you get that shirt? I love your one. you got to tell me where you get yours. It's like a pajama top. I'd love to get one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, well, I'm I got mine. I, I actually found mine on... I think it was eBay. Oh, I was yeah. going to say Amazon. I believe it was eBay. All right. So, but I, maybe I'll start doing some of my own ones. I, I've been thinking that for a while. I just haven't got around to it, but I think I might, you know. Well, I love your one. Show us your one again. Well, it's got the DeLorean. Yeah. You can barely see it, but it says Back to the Future. Yeah. And there's the 88 miles per hour. I love it. It's brilliant. The 88 is code for time travel. Yeah. Well, you've got, that's the thing. So people that don't know, Jetson's got a fantastic piece of Anon history. It's, it's going to go in the digital holographic library. I'm sure it's already there in another timeline. But your your uh, time travel series was fantastic and it taught me so much. And then that's how I reached out to you. And that's how we became friends. And you've got a new version of it come out. I'm working. You're a little quiet, Jetson. Have you got? Are you on? Is it a phone or microphone you're on? Let me check my volume here. Uh, I can go up a bit more there, and I can go up a bit. Let me check my settings in the actual Zoom app. Yeah, I can go up a bit there. Microphone. How do I sound now? About the same. I can hear you, but I just. Right. Well, yeah. I can't go up much and now you're very loud to me i didn't turn my speaker up but okay you're all right all right i can hear you it's just it's like you're like a little mouse can't hear that <laughs> loudly like a space <laughs> mouse you're like the elon musk mouse I on the on the spaceship about, i just heard about that today right before i got on the show with you i'd never heard of that i was really so he invited me to come on this podcast, and so I was watching one of his shows, and they were talking about the Space Mouse. That is so cosmic. Whose show was that? It was. Um, hold on, I'll, I'll tell you. I'm not anything to eat today, folks. I'm just I'm, I'm enjoying an evening sandwich with Jetson. Who's that one, Jetson? No. Uh, let's see. It's uh, Life, Liberty, Pursue Happiness in the Sara Seventeen Channel. Brock. From the SARA 17. Give you a shout out, Brock. Okay. And I, I'm going to be on his show tomorrow. Wow. Well, <laughs> there you go. See, that's the thing, synchronicity. So when we blend into this new realm, one of the things that will, I think, will just be as natural as breathing air, which it kind of is now, but the frequency of it, I, I either, it will just be happening all the time. I think synchronicities will just be everywhere all over the place and i think we'll see different beings different realms different things things will manifest instantly and i thought yeah i'll, I'll talk about the space mouse say so jetson's being the space mouse and then you learned about it just today just today i mean minutes before we got on here there you go 
So even when you feel prompted just to let, have a little bit of humour and tell a joke, you're on time, you know? Right, right. Tell us about the... I'm going to enjoy my sarni. So tell us about the new version of the time travel series. What additions, anything taken out, anything updated, changed? I don't like it when you change it because I love the original. It's like Star Wars. But I love all your works. But honestly, the original, I'm like, please keep it just like the Star Wars. It's like when they mess with the Zarlat pit. I was like, no, keep it as it is. You know? Well, I actually... And, and the Max Rebo... Um, yeah, the Max Rebo band. It's like, you don't need to do that. Just keep it as it is. But there's a reason you've updated it. I think this is... Is this the second, the third update? This is the third update. So tell us... Yeah, tell us what, what people can look forward to by watching this new one. All right. Well, I've got a little intro that, that I've prepared. So um, this is like the background to this 2024 time, Trump time travel update. Uh, my channel's never been known for glitzy productions, but I do feel that my production skills as a, as a video maker has have improved over the years. And so when I recently watched the 2022 update to the Trump time travel series. And you're growing a moustache, I notice, as well. Suits you, sir. I'm sorry, I did not understand that. What was it? I'm saying, and you're also, you are also growing a moustache. Which oh, are, right, right, right. Which is well, great. You know, here's the thing. Most people don't realize this, I guess, because of Zoom. I've always had a moustache, but you just couldn't see it because it was white. And so now I, I put a little bit of color on it, you know, just so it shows up a little bit. Wow. I did not know you had a moustache. Now you can see it. You look like right. a very distinguished gentleman. <laughs> like I'm seeing an invisible bowler hat with you. So when I recently watched the 2022 version, Tom, it was mm -hmm. me having this big long list of improvements I would I wanted to make. And so now I'm like skilled enough to execute those improvements. So that's what led to the current uh, update that, that's going on right now. Now, let me say this real quick, if I may. Uh, I'd like to point out that the biggest improvement that's being made to the Jetson White channel is the addition of channel partner, Nancy. And she's obviously an excellent narrator, both off and on camera, but she also contributes with ideas, writing, research, and administrative type tasks, whatever I need her to do. She's just right there. And beyond all this, she's become my friend, my confidant, and my greatest source of support for the message that I've been given to share. Fantastic. Thank you, Nancy, for all the support that you give to Jetson and the viewers. That's amazing. Thank you. And now to answer your question about what's new in the new update. So far, we've got parts one and two released. And we've done that. Uh, we got part one released and exactly one week later, we, we released part two. So it looks like that might be. How many parts are there in this series? I'm going for seven. Okay. So part one shared how the 17 team benefited from using Donald Trump as a time traveler. And this is a topic I touched on with you, Tom, in 2023. We did a show together. And now for this current 2024 update, I have uh, added the Q plus evidence that was in the 2022 time travel update. So in other words, it's got what I was telling you about how they used Donald Trump as a time traveler, plus all the Q plus evidence right together with it. So it's all in one place now. Wow. I know I asked you this before right. and you sent it to me before, but I believe the, the link expired. So I asked if I could upload the the original original series and you kindly sent it to me. But I, I if you still got it, I'd like to do that and I will do it. But I, I think the link expired when I, because I was so busy with everything. I'd love to put that up because I just think it's, I think it's great for the holographic museum. But I want to, you got me excited now about this, this third edition. Well, you like this news, Tom. Uh, while preparing for this update, this 2024 update, 
I found someone who had released my original series in its all of its unglorious. You know, I just I don't like it now. To me, it's like, oh no, I can't believe I did that. But I, I love it. And I've got it, and it's all together in one video. And I can, uh, whenever you're ready to have time to look at it, I'll give you, give it a send to you. I'll, you know, we'll send it. Please, to you. I'd love that because I love that. I, lo I even remember the. So it was. It made such an impression upon me. I remember the place where I watched it. Oh wow! It was early 2020. I met up with some fellow. I'll give a shout out to Jack Kidd and the Red Squirrels. We had a dinner in the height of 2020 in the summer in this beautiful location. And it was just great to meet fellow people because, you know, 2020 was nuts. That's a line from Tenet, actually, that came out in 2020. They say nuts. Anyway, I remember meeting everyone, having a great time. When I'm going to bed, I'm watching your series, and I've probably watched three or four hours worth of that that night. And it made such an impression upon me. It was just one of those things that was like, I'm here with my new friends. We're in 2020. It's a beautiful location. And who's this Jetson White character that has created this? And I was mesmerized by the whole thing. Well, I've got the original series, the one that you were looking for. So I can get that to you at your request. I'd love that. Thank you. And when you say, hey, you know what? Send it to me after the show, because I will action it this time. And I apologize for it before, but... So you said Donald Trump is a time traveler. He right. is. Right. Donald J. Trump in numbers is 148. Mm -hmm. Simple Gematria is 148. Scriptures is 148. Emmett Brown, the time traveler in Back to the Future is 148. And time traveler, with the American way to spell it with one L, is also 148. As is Jetson White. Oh, yeah. I forgot that. I knew that, of course. So are you telling us you're a time traveler, Jetson? Well, it's, it's classified information. I, I'd love to tell you either way, but it's classified. You are one of the most unique and delightful anons that I know. Anons is probably not even the right word, but, you know, in our team. I think you probably are, because of the stuff you know. Jetson White, you heard it here first. Is he a time traveler? I think he might be. I think it would be more accurate to say that where my information comes from is from uh, time travelers. Wow. And what, how do you get this information from them? Well, it's the kind of time travelers that Juan's always telling us about. Elaborate. Well, I can't really get into it. It takes away all the mystery, see. So angels walking across time and delivering information to you. And how do they how do you receive this information? By person, you talk to a personage, or they leave a message, they inspire you. What happens? I can't see into the spirit realm, no. Um, I don't have any uh, visual mm, contact with them. But I remember I told you how I was out on the gazebo and I, 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 was, I was being shown how to make a time travel device in my mind. It was being like downloaded into my mind. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, look at this. And I was talking out loud as I was pacing around in a circle. And I was like saying what I was seeing. And I did. I wasn't recording it, unfortunately. But I do remember three main points was had to do with ninety degree angles, angular momentum, and particle acceleration. Those are the three things that I could remember after the event was over. But I remember having this situation where after I was shown this device and I saw the size of it, which was not very large, I thought, "Oh wow, you could you could put that into something." And, you know, time travel with it, not even thinking anything about, you know, back to the, the movie, back to the future. And then all of a sudden it hit me like, oh, a car. <laughs> I mean, it was like, it was like, hit, talk about hidden in plain sight. And then I went, oh, no, this, I mean, this is just too much. 
but that's how I get the information. It's it's like a download, and it just kept pouring in. And I've got for like now I've learned I've got to start writing it down or recording it right away. As you're saying that, I'm wondering: Are you a future past offspring of Tesla? Well, I think um, to be honest, I think Tesla was much more handsome than I am, so I don't see how I could be. Related. Well, now you've got this moustache, you're you're giving off Tesla vibes. <laughs> Well, speaking of Tesla, that's what part two is about of the new time travel. So, Jetson, I remember asking you, what? could we create a time travel device? And you told me those principles. I didn't realize you'd had like an actual vision download on how to do it. Did that happen before or after we spoke about that? It, that happened way before when I was still in Hawaii. Okay. Can you take us through a little bit more of those three principles and just maybe you talk about do you talk about it in the in the new series? Uh, it ha we haven't got to that point yet where we're talking about that. We might in part three. Part three would probably be a good place to bring it up. Now it is brought up in part two how Tesla was first able to see the present, past, and future at the same time, and it does have to do with arcing transformers arcing at 90 degree angles and he put himself between them mm. so that, there's a reference to to um the 90 degree angle aspect but when when you said there's a reference to it where is that is that in a book of his no no um it was just something i was mm, i was shown like i was shown, okay i was shown it many different ways like i had a vision uh, of two sound waves heading toward each other and they both met at a 90 degree angle and there was this big boom, you know, like almost like a big bang kind of boom when they met. And, wow. just, uh, and you know, I, I would see it in my mind. So I've seen it several times in my mind, but I just had the, um, I just knew that there was something extremely powerful about waves colliding and meeting at a 90 degree angle wow you probably saw you saw because you saw the show so Juan was talking about this how tesla would invent everything in his head which saved him a lot of practical and physical financial time he could just work it out and know what the results were so you're talking about kind of something similar so the three things that you need just take us through those again what they are and how they'd intercept and why they would produce the result of time travel, you know, of, of time travel, or at least seeing the past, present, and future. Well, the three things I mentioned are angular momentum, 90 degree angle, and particle acceleration. Now angular momentum angular momentum of what? Of probably of particles. Um, see, I I don't I don't truly understand it. I just have these basic um, uh, like key elements, but I don't know how they all work together to create the ability. What you need, according to John Titter, and also that's been confirmed by uh, others, is two micro singularities two black holes basically and they have to go through they're they're housed in a magnetic field so that that's what keeps them like contained so that you can control them so and can you i'm assuming then you can produce deliberately artificial that's meant right, but you can you know if you're a designer if you're a mechanic an engineer you can produce two black holes that are necessary if you have, if you can create those three things, you know, have have uh, the particles, waves, something meeting at a ninety degree angle, uh, be able to accelerate particles fast enough. Um, I mean, CERN goes seventeen miles, and still they're not really accelerating fast enough. That's why they want a, a bigger uh, accelerator, and the. Um, the uh, 90 degree angle thing that would probably be rather tricky as well because you you would have to know how to direct this energy 
Do you see that from the diagrams of the flux capacitor in the movie Back to the Future? You talked about it's not necessarily that big. You said, oh, a car, but the actual kind of bit that makes it as as you, Emmett Brown, 148, Jetson White, 148, Time Traveller, 148, Donald J. Trump, 148, Simple Geometry, 148. As you say, it's not that necessarily big, you know, a car. And then Emmett Brown says in the film that the flux capacitor is what makes time travel possible. So it's got those three elements, you know, it's like that upside down Y. Right, right. They're not necessarily at 90 degrees, but they may be, if you saw it from a different angle, they maybe are. But is, does that resonate with you at all? Or is that just kind of a prop that they just put into the show? Well, the aspect of something called flux is part of the time travel um, equation. I hear that term a lot whenever I'm digging into this. Okay. I don't anything personally about flux and, and how it works and how it fits into the process, but you do hear that a lot. You know, physics, people in physics will talk about flux. What is flux? Mm, flux. Um, I've never really just looked it up. You know, I just kind of assumed, okay, I know what flux is, but... That'd be a good thing. So it's, it's the wave? Mm, like, it seemed like it, if it was just a wave, they would just call it a wave. It Maybe it has to do with, you know, three. Flux three flux dimensions? Flux, three things interacting. Huh. I Hence the upside down Y that they show in the on the flux capacitor. That's just a guess. I, I've never looked it up. I could look it up right now, just in the regular dictionary and see what it says. Let's do it. Yeah. And where did you get your information about John Titter? I mean, I only know about him because of your videos. I think I've seen one or two others reference it, but is there any re recorded writings of, from John Titter or is he, how do people know about John Titter? Well, John Titter. His birthday's actually on my, his birth, my birthday's actually on, that's actually on his computer. The bit in your bit is like, a, my date of birth is in that. I'm like, that's interesting. Your birthday's in that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It says here it's the rate of transfer of particles, energy, anything that's flowing. The rate of transfer. So it, it has to do with a speed rather than how it's put together. Flux. But um, to John Titter, the information I got was from he had uh, from – late 99 to early 2000 so really just the the year to, to i'm sorry to early 2001 so really like uh the year of 2000 he was on uh, a, a forum a time travel forum and he was basically giving out information and then answering questions and there's a lot you know over that whole year he put out quite a bit of information and so he was, he was, people didn't meet him per se, but he was putting out a bit like the Q posts. Right. As far as I know, he never met anyone in person that he was communicating with on the forum. Okay. Yeah, that, um, do you have a picture of that image that you put with the computer, the IBM? Sure. If you bring it up, so it's a mirror, there's, I haven't looked at it for ages, but there's a mirror, there's, yeah, there's my date of birth and there's a mirror on it. I yeah, I remember seeing that when you when I first watched that so with you. It's a particular picture, like of the fifty one hundred or what? I just remember it being the one that you use in the tra time travel series. All right, uh, you mean like the uh, Trump? I think it was on IBM nineteen seventy five or something like that on there. I haven't seen it for about two two and a half three years. Okay, um, tell you what. I don't know if I can just pull that right up. Uh, it would take me a minute, but I guess, do you do, can you edit it out, the, the wait time or? No, it's all right. Don't worry. I mean, we'd, we're, uh... let's see. I'll pull I just, what, there's a I just remember the picture in your, that you had in the video. Right. And uh, I thought, oh, that's, I could see, yeah, I could, you know, how my mind works. I could see codes in there. Ah, 
Well, see, I've got a John Titcher video that's specifically about him, but I've also got a section in here that's about that's John. John. But it's a very specific angle about John and how he uh, was here to assist, to warn John JFK Jr. That was his the reason he made his stop in 1999. Ah, so you think he? I, I can look up the. I don't worry about pulling up the by the M image because there's probably a few different ones. So I can yeah. I can find that another time. So so he interacted with John Junior before before July sixteenth, nineteen ninety nine. Right, that's what I'm proposing in this uh, time. Ah, time. okay. I don't, yeah, I don't show the fifty one hundred in the time travel Trump time travel vid. But I do show it in the video that is just about John Titcher alone. And that video is called. Mm -hmm. So Titcher is T-I-T-O-R, isn't it? Correct. So that's 82. John Titcher Time Traveler is the name of the playlist. And the John Titcher on Time Travel is the, the video that has huh. 50 in it so let me pull that up and i'll see if you see if that's the one you're thinking of yeah so 51 because my birthday's 15th of february but i saw the 51 mirrored and then there was other pieces in there um so john titter's 129 juan talked about 129 just on the, on the weekend but oh, judgment yeah. day because you when you're describing it, it sounds like like um uh, what's his name? Carl Reese coming back to, and then you've got the whole John Connor, Sarah Connor thing in Terminator. But Judgment Day is one twenty nine, but they take the E out. There was a there was a Mandela effect on that. They took that out. So when you look at things now, it's one twenty four. But if you go with that, so if you do time, because you just said time traveler, so time traveler one forty eight, add one twenty nine, comes to two seven seven which comes to quantum financial system. But if you do John Peter, the time traveler, comes to 310. 310 is the number I've been talking about for ages now because the 310th day of the year this year is November 5th, which is the election day. Oh. 5th of November is 176, which is back to the future. So this is good that you've jogged my memory on John Titter because I, I did numbers on him ages ago and forgot what they were. But... Oh. John Titter, the time traveler, is 310. And the election of all elections, the calling election, make sure is this November 5th. Something's coming. I don't know exactly how they're going to do it. I actually, this is my new proposal for it. I think it's a Jubilee moment, but I also think it could be, it could be the, the, the X. It could, because we're in the year 24, which is X, which is the 24th letter. There's the X of the eclipses going over the US. Twitter changed from X. So Twitter is 115 in numbers, which is 11.5, which is November 5th. And then it's like, which which year of November 5th? Oh, we're going to change it to X. X is 24. You add them together, comes to 139, which is transition. Trump's always been talking about the transition to greatness. Um, and it's Christopher as well. Christopher Nolan, who did the Tenet film. So Tenet talks about this uh, thing called a... A temporal oh, pincer. pincer. Yeah. Yeah. A temporal pincer comes to 165, comes to other physics that one talks about. 165 comes to 88, Trump, 77 Hertz or power or Christ. Add those together, comes to resurrection. 165 is resurrection. Temporal pincer is 165. Um, and uh, other physics is 165. And I'm wondering. And real Kim Shady, if you're watching Kim, so she's a great decoder. She's on Twitter um, and other channels, but I know her on Twitter. She, so I'm I'm thinking that maybe the, the crossroads, the junction, is somehow November 5th. It could be that we've – I've seen little pieces of it, and I'm, I'm seeing maybe more and more pieces of possibilities of this, Jetson, that it could be that we're on two – lines maybe more but two one going in a direction and then one going in a reverse direction and it could be that they people like john titter jfk jr donald trump others diana all of them jfk 
somehow they know and how to use this and harness this and they're able to change things from the past and the future therefore gives us a proper quantum atonement result because atonement is 107 quantum is 107 military is 107 so when q said it has to be military it has to be quantum it has to be atonement i think somehow the people you know particularly the christian viewers i know you're christian so the atonement of christ basically remedies everything it, it corrects all all wrongs and and uh if it, if this world is a quantum world a quantum reality which i believe it is quantum's 107 atonement's 107 and so it could be that somehow through this temporal pincer it could be pointing to this this effect and it could be that the crossroads is 310 which is it's a leap year so it's november 5th the 310th day of the year malachi 310 the quantum financial system 310 there's other 310s trump kept going down to yuma Yuma, there's a wall, 310 to Yuma. They made that film twice to make sure people paid attention. Um, but maybe this, and I don't understand it all. And it's becoming clearer as time goes on, but it could be that this junction, this reversal, um, some, something about November 5th, we've been told to remember it, and they've chosen that election. It's, it's landed for some reason on that day. And... Uh, 310th day of the year is that which comes to John Titter, the time traveler. And I completely had not either known that or forgot that. And it's like, it could be that this temporal pincer is going on and it somehow remedies it. That's the other thing. In the film, they talk about blue team and red team. Um, I know you haven't seen it yet, but you might be able to see it in some of the clips that you look at. So get this. So if you do uh, team... Uh, yeah, so red team. Yeah, team is uh, 39. Hang on, is it? Yeah, team is 39, which is Big Ben, which is Angel, which is 10. Um, it's the mirror of 93. But red team comes to 86. Blue team comes to, hang on, that's not right, sorry. Red team. Red team comes to 66. Blue team comes to 79. So 79 plus 66 is 145, which is Wonder Woman, which is Trumpology, which is uh, Scott, which is Trump plus Tesla. Trump plus Tesla is blue team, red team. There are two teams in the film Tenet. One's going forward in time, the other one, the blue team's reversing backwards. and. You can even ask yourself the question, how do you know which one is which? But they tell you, they tell you which one is which. And you've done this with the two Trumps. And so there's one with the red tie, there's the one with the blue tie. Kim talks about how the blue tie one's talking about stuff in the future. So even when people see it now, it's not, it's from the future and it's not necessarily actually happened. And But you add those together. So if you do blue team, which are the ones working backwards, and you've got red team, which is our timeline moving forward, and they eventually cross. And I think they might cross at November 5th. And the reason I think it might be that is because temporal pincer is 165 plus red team plus blue team. It all comes to 310. And I think that might be why. And the President Trump said it two, two or three weeks ago. Again, he's maybe 10 days ago, he said that November 5th is going to be the most important day in America's history. And I don't think he just means because it's the election. People say that might not happen. It may do, but it's, in my opinion, it's the call in election made sure. That's 246 in the Trump thing of an I, 246, call in election made sure, 246, which is also, yes, the 5th of November. Yes, every last secret. I think somehow that is, I think it is. I think there's something coming. And I don't fully understand it, but something is coming. And it will probably make more sense when we reach that crossover point, you know. But some of us are getting previews of it. Um, I'm going to put this in, the people can put the comments. Have you ever felt that you've maybe met yourself, your future self audience, and they've either manifest, made themselves known to you or you've felt them familiar and they've walked past or they've been in a car looking at you or something? I've even had it with ships, lights in the sky, and then I've caught them and then they've they've winked and then they've gone. I think those occurrences are going to increase because I'm getting them, and it ties in with this whole thing with Tenet with the temporal pincer movement and blue team, red team, because it all comes to 310. And 64 is Jubilee, which is Tenet. 
which is Israel, which is Zion. We were told it would be last. I have a feeling that people are going to start to see more and more possible versions of themselves or others. And it might not be totally clear, but it's more like a feeling. It's more like a feeling. See if that resonates with people in the comments. Does that make any sense to you, buddy? Well, I'll tell you what does make sense is it's just so exciting to see everyone coming up with these different ideas about what could be going on. I think it's fascinating. I think it's wonderful that people have opened up their minds to new ideas and they're, you know, they're, they've come out of the boxes. That's fantastic. Yeah, something's coming. So please continue with the with the three parts of the of the time of the of your download of how to make time travel possible. Do you think you if you had enough resources, like do you, does it need many does it need much physical financial resources to make the device that you're thinking about? Well, you need more than well, okay. If resources could get uh you know get you a physicist who knew how to um. Here's the thing, the, the singularities that were part of the 2036 time travel device that John Titcher used to come back to our timeline had been what's called cleaned at CERN. So whoever, if you've got enough money to have contacts at CERN, which I believe White Hats have control of CERN right now in our yeah. time. They do. That's why they said it's seventeen. There's seventeen elements, supposed elements, and then there's seven. You know, the length of it is seventeen miles, and they put that in the papers yesterday. Mark Atwood put that out. I saw it and tweeted it. I do believe that they're. I believe they're in charge of it. All all people in our community, and God bless them, because everyone's got their roles. Anyone that puts out like fear, scare, oh, we're gonna, you know, we're on the brink of death. I don't believe any of that. I just don't. I don't believe any of it. I believe white hats are in control of literally everything. Um, and I know it's a cliche, but I think it is true. People are really deeply asleep, and therefore they needed a lot of cajoling to wake them up. Because there's a lot of good, innocent people out there, or at least you know, at least will make the grade, but they just haven't woken up yet. And so I don't, I don't believe any of the scary stuff. I never talk about it because it just doesn't interest me. I just don't because it doesn't resonate. I don't believe it. I, I agree. I think, I think White Hats are in control of CERN a thousand percent. And there be might, might be other people that we respect in the community that say that's totally false. I disagree with it because I, I, I just don't believe that. I don't believe the charade. I don't believe the charade. There's, there's a lot of channels right now. Um, on, I'm finding them on Rumble who are, uh, they've got the, what they call the receipts. They're showing why it's true that Biden is not the president and that Trump is the commander in chief. And they've yeah. got all kinds of, uh, you know, tangible evidence that this is true. Yeah. And they just, they, they're always yeah. talking about how continuity of government is in place right now. Uh, the military is in control, but not publicly yet. And yeah. so people are, I mean, Thank and there's all layers upon it. It's like, a, you know, it's, it's like an onion. It's layers upon layers. I instantly knew as soon as Trump spoke when he did the flight bans at the beginning of lockdowns, I just knew God told whatever, you know, something higher up told me everything's going to be fine. He's in, you can trust this guy. And I just knew I've always liked him, but I didn't need to know about all the other evidence of, you know, machines and counting ballot, you know, and that's I, that, I know that serves a purpose for a certain demographic, but for me and my house, I just it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't really. It's just hogwash. I don't believe any of it because if the White House, were, if Trump bought the swamp, which he declared before twenty twenty, then he did. You either believe him or he didn't. So he did, and therefore everything is all being shown to. And if they need, you know, to let some catch him in a trap, and then he. They can catch them on that, okay. But there's so many pieces to this. But fundamentally, I don't think anybody needs to live in fear at all. And if anyone puts out fear, I just walk past it. It doesn't interest me at all, you know. Once you know a certain level of truth, you can't be scared. I guess that's what it is. Once you know, you can't be scared. And there are certain things you know that you can't even articulate. I get my stuff. I try and explain it the best way I can. And I think people get a gist of it. But I know certain things, just like you know certain things. And certain people in the audience know things. And it's like... Once you know, you know, and all the other stuff is just, you know. 
That's that's why I really uh, tumbleweeds. Tumbleweeds. Let's go chase a tumbleweed. Okay, let's do that. All right. Okay, great. Good luck. If you need to chase tumbleweeds, by all means do. But if you want to do something else, then you'll be fine, you know. Right. And that's what I am uh, extremely grateful for about the message I've been given. It's like, it's a message and my only job is to give it. It's not to convince anyone that it's true. Exactly. There you go. It doesn't matter what they believe. It's a message of hope for those who can't with eyes to see and ears to hear and can accept it. But it, it doesn't matter what they believe. They can believe another message that has hope. They can believe anything. And it'll still, in, you know, in what my mind thinks, everything I've said is going to happen. And yeah. nothing can stop it. Just like, you know, nothing can stop what is coming. And it's going to happen whether they believe in it or not. And it's and it's going to be good. The only people that it's not going to be good for is those who are knowingly choosing evil over good. Yeah. I agree. hundred percent, thousand percent, buddy. Exactly. Exactly. And that's it. You look at Jetson, look at his beautiful blue eyes, like Mickey blue eyes. You can just say, you can see the purity of him. It's like this guy is, he's, he's on a mess, you know, he's on a mission as we all are. And we've got our missions and our messages to put out. And whether people believe indifferent change that get on or not off the bus, it doesn't matter because it's going anyway. Um, you said singularity, that's 155 in numbers, which comes to the millennium, which is the thousand years of peace. The singularity is 188, which comes to President Kennedy, comes to close encounters, comes to coronavirus. So when they were declaring 188 all over the world, they were also saying the singularity. And I think there's a good singularity coming. You know, people say, oh, there's a negative one, bad one. Maybe there is, but I not in not in not in this one, you know, not in this version. I think it's it's inevitable what's coming. And it is, it's the millennium, it's a thousand years of peace, it's the golden age, it's the age of Aquarius, you know. You said I was I I have my uh debt my decodes database up in the background, and you said uh and something is coming. And when I got to the 188s that are in mine, I've got four in my in my database, and it and the first one is the rapture is coming, 188. There you go. President Kennedy singing for my life, which is a personal one, and then trumpet of an angel, 188. Nice. There you go. Angel with 39, yeah. I just did that, didn't I? Blue team. That's it. Blue team. Ah, blue team is blue angel, and blue and red team is red angel. Ooh, nice. So there are angels on these missions doing this stuff, and it's like, okay. And Jacob's ladder. How many? How, ah, Jake. There you go. Jacob's ladder. The allegory of the angels going up and descending and going up. Guess how many steps are on the angels on the ladder? 39 steps. Jacob's ladder is 39 steps. Really? Because that was the name of a, a Hitchcock movie, wasn't it? That's it. Sorry, it is a Hitchcock movie. That's what I'm thinking. Hitchcock. Oh, yeah. But is that based on is that based on Jacob's ladder though or not? Is it different? But there are 39 steps in in a Hitchcock's movie, yes. That's it. There are. I think there's a connection with that. Maybe I've blurred those two timelines. But um, but yeah, thirty nine steps, and the Jacob's ladder of going up and down. An angel is thirty nine, so maybe it is. Maybe that's why. Maybe. maybe that's probably you know that might be why. But yeah, red team is red angel, blue angel. There's probably been a baseball team called the Blue Angels. I'm sure some somewhere along the line. Um, and blue angel is uh is blue team, and together is one forty five. And uh, yeah, temporal pincer. This is the other thing. Temporal is is a hundred, which is time machine. Okay. So time machine pincer is one six five. Temporal pincer is one six five. One twenty five is time travel. One twenty five is John Kennedy. One twenty five is dark to light. But one twenty five is also inversion. And inversion, in the stricter sense, is not time travel, but it's still changing the flow of time. Um, so you are traveling along a timeline, but in reverse. So it's in, you know it's in that category. It's in that category. Um, yeah. Please continue, buddy. Sir. All right. So part two, we just put part two out yesterday of the uh, 2024 Trump time travel update, and it, as as you might recall, if you watched part one, you've been a busy lad. So I don't know if you have. But part one opened with the Tesla-Trump connection. 
uh, I'm speaking of John G. Trump, and but it didn't go into it. But it so in part two, we just dove headfirst into that rabbit hole, and what we found was a plethora of proof that Tesla designed the New Yorker Hotel. But there was an, also an, un, another unexpected insight that came forth during our research, and I'm going to share it here with you, but it'll never make it into the update. So did he, you say he designed it, did he design it prior to it being built and then he lived in it later? Right, right. If you watch the video, it's it's very difficult to um, to have a doubt who designed that building after you watch that video. Wow. Rabbit hole is 92 numbers. Manhattan, 92. Reverse, 92. He's, you're, uh, you've got a cosmic connection going there. I do. That's where I met Ivanka. That's right. In all the gin joints in all the world, she walks into mine or I walks into hers. And then five days later, Melania and President Trump came down the escalator. I actually think both Trumps were there were present at that point. I think I think real Donald Trump came down the escalator because above him it said currency exchange 174, which is trust the plan 174, I have the storm 174, uh Luke Skywalker 174, but um uh Age of Aquarius 174. Yeah, 174. Um or oh, the Age of Aquarius 174. And then he went down the escalators and then they did this, in my opinion, people can watch the video, but then they did the swap. And when he actually spoke on the podium, I believe that was POTUS, All right. who's different from real Donald Trump. As you've, at least, you know, you've like two Donald Trumps in, you know, plus one, and you've got that all in the original of the series. Four. Yeah, there could, there could be, I think there could be at least four. Yeah, but definitely those, I think there's two main ones. Maybe there one. Well, Real Donald Trump, I think, was the first one that came down. When I'm saying and then they did the swap of POTUS, huh? I'm not saying there are four that are Donald Trump's age right now. I think there at the most there's two that are his age. But okay. I, well, that makes sense. That's what I think with POTUS and Real Donald Trump coming down. I do think there's another one as well, that Mar-a-Lago, the Mar-a-Lago Trump, which looks di <laughs> remarkably different and shorter than most. Could be his brother. But um, the the... So the one that did all the Abraham Accords and would always sit in the White House and his eyes go slightly up, that's POTUS. And there's possibility, well, I know you disagree with this, but I think there might be a, a very close connection with JFK on that. But then there's real Donald Trump that comes down the, the they used to do all the speeches on the tarmac during COVID. So he would be there talking with all the, you know, the aeroplane propellers and all the rest of it, talking to the press in the long coat. That's real Donald Trump, in my opinion. Good work there. Because one, because one, real Donald Trump's eyes smile downwards. Poetuses go upwards. I've noticed that. I've, I, you know, I've never tried to isolate one from the other. I thought, oh, well, he looks a bit tired, or you know, I, I made an excuse for it. But I'm yeah. glad that like you is out there. You know, fix. Okay, this is him. This is him. This is not him. This is not him. Kind of thing. Yeah. Would you see the tweet? You might have seen it. Don Junior did a post a couple of days ago for Easter, and they showed. I don't think either real Donald Trump or POTUS, but they showed the Mar-a-Lago Trump and people are like, oh, wow. Are they ch showing us that this is more than one Donald Trump? It's like we've, a lot of us have been talking about that on and off for a long time, but I think they are because it's like, and then people get a bit like, oh, no, there can only be doubles or clones or actors or... No, there's no clones. Zero clones. That's against God's law. There are no clones of President Trump. Period. Get it out of your head. There, if there's a double. Well, let me fi let me finish what I'm going to say. So right. people, and you're going to get upset about that. There could be more than one version of him. Okay, I'm not saying he's a clone. But what I'm saying is, I think they're two. I think real Donald Trump and POTUS are two distinct beings, people, but they're one and the same. You know, they work together, they have the same mission. I, that's what I feel. That's what I understand. But in terms of other doubles and masks and all the rest of it, I think if you look at the Mar-a-Lago stuff, there's plenty of pictures of of another Trump that looks like, he just looks like the resident of Mar-a-Lago for whatever reason. And it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. I think that's the good, maybe protection. He might need to be somewhere else doing other stuff, you know. Um, yeah.
you'll watch part one. If you'll watch the new series, it explains how there can be more versions of people. And there's there's no cloning involved. It's just it's like it's just time travel. You go into the day. Yeah, when I say cloning, I don't mean actual cloning of Trump. I mean because people get yeah, they get a bit heady, but you jump straight on it. I'm not saying that. I'm saying uh, you know there are more I, there are more there are more more versions of him and they can do it through time travel. But I actually might be incorrect, but I feel that there are two distinct beings, people. POTUS and real Donald Trump. And then if they want to do other versions from there on, fine. But I think there's at least two of them. Like they're, they're somehow cosmic twins doing this mission. I've seen pictures of, I've seen Donald Trump 30 years ago. And then I've seen another Donald Trump 30 years ago. I was like, oh, that's, that's the real Donald Trump. And that's POTUS. And when I say real Donald Trump, that's just the label he's got on his Twitter. I'm not saying that's the real one and the POTUS isn't. I'm saying that they're two, almost maybe even, who knows, maybe even like a father-son relationship. I don't know, but it's, I think there's at least two of them. I think there's at least two. And there could be more, but at least two. Uh, I wasn't uh, directing my... My ranting. No, I know you weren't, but I. But it was good because it was an example. It brought it up a bit, and I was like, "Okay, <laughs> continue to I finish." But it was. I. You're totally fine. I get it. I didn't think you were saying that. I thought you were saying that. That's what people are saying. And well, it's it's out there. People say that, and so the other thing they say about clones, and I don't know. I'm open to all possibilities. So they say clones are only used by the bad side, and that's it's maybe totally that's true. maybe that's the case. I don't know. Maybe it is. I know. I'm telling you, I know without a doubt that clones are not used on our side. We do everything by the rule of law and by God's law. And that Okay. Is so when we need when we need a, a so are you saying then when we need other versions of people? Because I've seen other versions of people. I think there's bless her, the Ivanka I met is different from the one you see with Jared all the time. I think that's that's a, that's a that can be a good thing. That's fine. It's but not, it's something you just do because. You but do what it. I'm well, let me let me finish the question. So, so when the white hats need to have more than one version, do they just do a time travel thing and then they've got another one to do that do the job, or do they just do a user mask? What are they? I think it's both. What do they use? Whatever thing they planned it out ages ago and it's going exactly as planned they had as many as they needed because they knew what was going to happen and so when they get those versions of good guys when the white hats are doing versions of good guys and good girls is that all done through a time travel process so they can just produce yeah. as many it's okay like part one and i'm trying to tell you part okay. one of the series. and you're well, that's good and that does make more sense that makes more more uh and I've heard the two sides of that. I've heard, yeah, the baddies use the clones and the good ones use. You weren't listening that day. You were on your phone doing something the whole time I was talking. And it, every time it Hang on. You, well, you got to rewind. Go back and say that again. Well, part one is me and you, a show I did with you where I explain how Trump is being used as a time traveler and how it benefits the QT, the, the yeah. seven. But I, but I know that. What I'm saying, just I know that. So I, I'm, I'm not disputing. I'm, I'm just, I guess, re-talking to you about that. Pro, you know, what your thoughts on it. So if we did a show on that two years ago, then great. But I don't remember everything that we've said. But my understanding is when there's lots of good versions, when there's lots of good versions of them, then I would suggest that they probably have done it through time travel. But I do think there's also, in the case of Trump, there's at least two main ones, Poachers and real Donald Trump. And I think they were. I know somehow they just get them cosmic the twins that stay in this timeline rather than sending them to a future timeline. When you put someone in a different timeline, like John Titter came to this timeline, he was in our timeline. He left his timeline and came to ours, which meant it was a bit different, but not enough to throw things off. His dad, his parents still lived in Florida at that same address. His grandfather was still one of the designers of the 5100. But he was in a different timeline than he grew up in. So when you make a, 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 
another, when you go back and get a Trump that you need to go and gather intel 20 years into the future, you put him, you grab him from the day before, you put him in the next day and you have him start living out that life. That puts him in a different timeline than we're living in right now. Yeah, I remember you. I remember that conversation. Yeah, I remember that. It's not enough to whack out the, all the information would still be relevant that he was gathering. Okay. What do you think then on the two Trumps? Do you think that was it? It was just one that you just, what you described, that's how they got the two in this timeline. Do you think that's what it is? However many they needed, that's how many they got. And they did it all at the same time. And it's, okay. it, was after, it was after Trump was president, after he was read in, after he knew everything that he needed to know so that that person that they sent into the future to live out 20 years had everything in their head that Donald Trump had in his head. They don't have to brief him. Yeah. Yeah. That could be how they've done it. Do you think there's ever a case for for two beings like being born around the same time that are you know, that there were two Trump babies growing up? Maybe even a day apart. Maybe they did that. Maybe they just separated them by a day. Because I think I, if I had to pick, I'd say Potus is older. If I think Potus is older than real Donald Trump. The one with the eyes like that is is the more senior of the two, I believe. I don't know. I mean, that sounds logical because he does have that kind of, you know, that yeah. does, that is a feature of an older person. It's like they kind of always look like they have sleepy eyes or something. But I don't know. I don't know. I just know that whatever they needed, they used the, the time travel device that was developed by Nikola Tesla to do it. And they did this thing where they would go to the day before, send them to the day, send him, Trump himself, the real Trump from our timeline, mm -hmm. the day before. He would go and find himself from the day before. So he knew everything. This this Trump that he found had everything in his head that he had in his head. Then they send him one day into the future. So he's in a completely different timeline than we are. Lives out 20 years, comes back one second later. Right? When John Titcher was gone for years here, when he arrived back in his 2036 timeline, he came back one second after he left. Just like Einstein. He came back a minute later in the car. Right, only it was one second rather than one minute, right. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Well, he actually, he actually came back instantaneously, but he'd been away for a minute and then reappeared in this time. Yeah, so it was, wow. Well, so, what do you? Th so, if they meet, can they can they meet each other? To can they just meet each other without any without any quantum collapsing or anything like that? No problem whatsoever. That is that is false information. See, this sounds really strange, yes. And so, you know, when I said I've been getting feelings, I have a feeling a future version of me is coming like near where I am. Where did it come from? I don't know, but they're always in a car. They're always in a car. And I at first thought it was just... And then I, it's strange to explain, but I think there's... I've, I might go out and just meet them. I might just go <laughs> tap on the window, hello, and see who it is. I have a feeling, because they keep coming, and I've and it's not, it's not like a worrying feeling. It's like I have a feeling it might be a future version of me. Here's the thing. Time travel is not given to just anybody. It's it's divinely protected. And the only person that has access to it is Nikola Tesla. Everything they do, our military does, military intelligence, whoever's doing all this, the, the 17 team, they must be under the supervision of Nikola Tesla. So is Nikola Tesla Q? Well, he's probably part of the Q team. If I mean, but he might even be, you know, 
such a, a, an important part. He doesn't have time to be on the Q team. Um, I think the Q uh, project, the Q um, operation is angelic in nature. I think the three that aren't military are angels. Ha, huh, the three Nephites. I thought there were maybe three Trumps when I figured that they were the same people. That's another topic that will take longer to just describe. Um, okay. Interesting. And then John Re Revelator. Do you think that Tesla is from the line of Christ, or do you think he's maybe a possible version of Christ that came back as Tesla? Well, see, there is no line of Christ. Um, Jesus's father was God, so his mother... Um, would have had to have had, I mean, anybody in his family would have been his half-brother. Um, he didn't have children of his own. He was... He was so I think that there's a lot of... I, that I'm not, And I'm not going to get hung up on it, but I, I'm i open to the possibility that Christ could have um, had children. I'm not, because he was way too focused and had way too much to do. Just like Tesla. Yes. So that's why I'm wondering. So I'm wondering, maybe did Tesla come back as is is Tesla? Because I didn't used to grow up with the the notion of reincarnation, but I'm definitely more open to it now. And I don't mean in like a kind of. I just think it could be a real divide. It could be a real thing. I don't know, and I'm not going to argue the way the ways and wherefores of it. But I'm wondering maybe because what you just said there with Christ, it's almost describing Tesla's missions. Like he was too busy to have a family. He was too busy to be married. Yes busier than tesla so he, he didn't have time to focus on anything but his mission he didn't have time to go you know looking for a wife and having kids and all that ridiculous stuff no well god said populate the earth anyway that's another thing people got their own you know it doesn't matter whatever it is it is so rude about it but I, mean, I know but we all have our own holy we all have our own sacred cows we have our own beliefs about stuff so it's like it's i just that? It's logic. It's just logic. Please. It's just logic. You well, it know. might be, but there's also because okay, so what okay, I'll point this out. Two shows ago, Juan said that that um uh Diana is a Merovingian and she comes from the Christ line. So she, that's what he said. She said what? And she comes from the Christ line? But she's he said that Diana, because he was talking about the inception, the creation of William, how they planned all that and did that, and they said, Well, they got they got the the Christ bloodline from Diana because she's a Merovingian, and she said that's that's what you can watch it two shows ago. One, that's what one said. Not that one is the gospel on everything. He's the he's the gospel according to one. You know, we all we have all got our pieces, so it's you know. The thing is, is Jesus was from the line of bloodline of David, so you could be yeah. from the Davidic bloodline, but you're not going to be from the Christ bloodline because that doesn't exist. Well. Have a watch. Have a watch. See what you make of his, the show he did about three weeks ago with me. As he brings it up there. Juan says it. Uh, there's no way I would ever believe that Jesus had any time to go. He wasn't here to to get a date and go. You know, marry somebody. That was not why he was here. Okay, less anger, Jess, Jetson. Less anger. Less anger. <laughs> Christ was a pacifist. Less angry. You know. He was not a pacifist when it came to spiritual warfare. No, I know that. Well, we had that discussion before why you won't watch movies that are above you or G, whatever the rating is, because it's like, well, Christ wouldn't watch a you know, thingy movie. And I said, well, actually, if it needed to be, he'd get pretty, he wasn't, you know, he could definitely fight if he had to. He could get, you know, he needed to, he was the master of the universe, you know. So anyway, people get it. That's the thing. This is what, this is what happens. And I respect people's opinions, but at the end of the day, they're just opinions. And it's like, you know, and even if it's logic, it makes logic to you. I'm, I just want to know. So I'm, that's why I ask these questions because I'm like, well, I think maybe Christ could have had kids. It makes sense to me that he could have done. But it also, from what you're saying, I can hear what you're saying that he was so focused and he wouldn't have done. So either way, I'm not going to, it's not going to affect me today, you know, but, but we'll see what see what one says and make you know see what you make of it. But not the one is the, is the gospel on everything because you know, so he's not. Um, no, he's not. He's not. No one. None of us are. I'm not. You're not. None of us are. You know. 
really wrong about what he says about the Beatles. So, and I know that for a fact because I've studied him, studied him for eight years. What does he say about the Beatles? I, it, I don't want to get into it right now. Is that all right? Can I? Can I uh, finish? What, no, because it well, just just humor me a little bit. What's what's the Beatles? He doesn't understand their, what their roots were. He thinks they were a product of the deep state or the Illuminati or handshake clubs or whatever. They were not. And so he says they were part of this. So uh, what was it? The tra Tavistock? Yeah. No, not at all. They were self-made men. They wrote their own songs. They played their own instruments. They came up through the ranks like you would not believe what they went through to get to where they got. For 10 years, they just did this horrific schedule. They never had a day off. They, uh -huh. they three, four different gigs a day. They, I mean, there's no, I, I know way too much about them to believe one word that he says about the Beatles. I don't know where he got his information, but obviously he didn't do his homework on that. How do you know so much about them though? I studied them for eight years and wrote a book about them. But how did you? What? Where? What were your sources? Did you meet any of them? Them themselves. They. Uh, well, you know, I had in my training timeline. I had. I chose George Harrison as my dad. So, but uh, he didn't tell me anything about that. I knew everything about that before that. Sorry. Put pause for a second there, Jetson. In your training timeline. Yeah, it's in the Toth series. Tell us a bit more, though, because not everyone can, you know, it's like not everyone has time to research everything. It's like some can research and they love to research, but people, a lot of people are just catching this right now. And so let's elaborate. I have a series out on my channel. It's called How I Found Toth's Spaceship. Okay. And there's this thing called the Emerald Tablets that I had never heard of when I was told to start listening to it. Yeah. It's months, and it's got clues into how to find a spaceship that was hidden by Toth the Atlantean. He was able to escape Atlantis before it fell. He and his highest students and some of his relatives. And he um, he is the designer of the Giza Plateau, the Giza Complex. Um, and he started uh, giving me information after I listened to the Emerald Tablets for a long time. But what happened was after a year of going through this... Scott was giving you downloads, you're saying, yeah? He was giving me information on how to find his spaceship, yes, because it was, it was a it was a necessary operation that had to take place by seven teams around the world. They had to retrieve these crystals that were backups of the Earth's core, a, a core of a of, of this like of a place like this records everything that ever happens. It's the true, the truth about this system is recorded into a, you know, like a processor, and but it was being blocked. It couldn't. The information couldn't get out, and that's why uh, this this uh, operation had to go down because backups were made of the core with all the truth. Uh -huh. And these, they were stored into crystals that were hidden all around the earth. And uh, I was chosen to find Toth's spaceship because those crystals for the actual truth about Atlantis were in the cargo bay of his spaceship that was inside an underground pyramid in Egypt. And after that all happened, and the, the mission was a success. The, all the crystals got back to where they needed to go. That's when the Q movement took off. That's when the truth started coming out because now it was available. It had been blocked before, but after, the, after all those crystals got turned in, after the first set got turned in, the truth started coming out on October 28, 2017. And they kept, uh, keep, the teams kept bringing them in until I think January 10th. 2018 and that's when all the truth was able to start coming out to the world and that's what allowed the q angels to start the q posts because that was like a protocol that had to be met wow but crystal is 98 missions 98 9 plus 8 is 17 which is q cool 
But I said all that, say this, a year after that, after this all started, uh, I started, um, uh, something happened and I knew that something had changed for me and I started um, having to, my first assignment as this, uh, in this new state was to start pulling in my In this new state? Yeah, in this new state that I was in. Not a new state like, you know, Florida, but a new state of... Uh, a new being. What were you before then, when you were doing this stuff in Egypt? What were you before? Uh, well, I was like a blended being, I guess you would say. Okay. Elaborate, please. See, I don't expect anyone to believe this, so I really don't. Well, I do. You look at me. Look at me. I, you have my attention. I know you. I love you. And it's like I've always known you're different. So please tell me. Please share. I have another series called "The Hundred and Forty Four Thousand Are Star Seeds." Mm -hmm. Most people have their own ideas about both of those terms: hundred forty four thousand and star seeds. And none, never the twain showed me, you know, but um, I was shown that they're connected, that they indeed are what a star seed is, is one of the 144,000 that was killed by Herod when he was trying to kill Christ. Ah, so you were one of the babies back then? Could be. Huh. Mm. so you feel that the 144th it was was that how many babies it was 144,000 babies well most people think it was just Bethlehem but it says right in the Bible that he had them kill all the two and under males coast to coast in Israel so, how many males 200 uh, no uh, he said Herod sent yeah. his out to kill all the males two and under oh yeah okay yeah so it was what you're saying it was a huge region region bigger than israel well not bigger than israel but um they're back but um cool just much bigger than just bethlehem right hold on hello well hi look at here look who's here hi tom Hey Nancy. How are you doing? Yeah, good. How are you? <laughs> good, good, good. good Jetson told us how much work you've been helping him with, and I thanked you for on behalf of the audience and everyone else for all the work you've helped him with. So thank you. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, we've been working together quite a bit, getting lots done. Indeed. So yeah, great to see you. Great to see you, Nancy. Thank you for everything you do. We're, you know, we're. Oh, you paused. You there, Jetson? I think he's still here. Give us a wave. Give us a cosmic wave, Jetson. He's still there. He's still there. He might be being cheeky, he might have paused it for a second just to speak with Nancy for a second. Well, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that with 144,000 and with Herod. Familiar with that story, obviously, growing up. But um, 144,000, yeah. Oh, he's gone. Are you coming back in? Who is Jetson White? I've always known he's a peculiar and delightful chap who's going to tell us more. Does he come back in? Let's have a look. What do you think, folks? <clears throat> Timelines. 
doubles, triples. President Trump did say that actually when he was out on the tarmac early 2020. And he said, great job numbers. And you mentioned my grandmother. I would end uh, on 43 seconds. She used to live at number 43. Dove Dale Close, Dove, sign of the Dove. And, um, but he did talk about doing some doubles and triples in that clip. And it was only, I think, one, one minute 40, which is Tom Numbers, or 141, Tom Bushnell. The quant no, quantum leap. Is he coming back? I don't know if he's coming back. I'm not sure. All right, I'm going to hang up and then we might carry on with part two because I don't know if he's coming back in. Let's have a look.